Today we're going to look at standard deviation and the learning goals for this lesson. By the end of this lesson, we'll be able to understand that standard deviation is a measure of spread, shows how far DR data deviates from the mean. We'll also be able to calculate the standard deviation of a data set and compare two data sets using their standing standard deviation. So standard deviation is given the symbol here, sigma. This is sigma, it's a Greek letter, sigma. And that defines just how far the data spreads from the mean. So if we have a look at where the mean sits in a set of data, if we've got here uh, the mean sitting in the middle of a set of data, the data will be spread lower, above, uh, lo below and above the mean. And this graph shows how that data is spread out. So if we have a look at one standard deviation above and one standard deviation below, the majority of the data sits in that kind of a zone. About 68.2% of all of the data sits within plus or minus one standard deviation. That's the definition of what the standard deviation is. It shows that 68.2%, the absolute majority of data, sits within that, um, that range of the mean. If we have a look um, further out, two standard deviations goes even further out, and all but about 5% uh, or so of the, uh, of the data lies within two standard deviations up and two standard deviations below the mean. It's about 95%, something like that. Okay, and then if we go three standard deviations, then we are looking at 90, 99.9% of the data, 99.8% of the data or something like that. 99.8% of the data lies um, outside of that um, sorry, within those bounds. So you can see that um, this, is, this is just how the standard deviation is defined. It describes just how much that data is spread out from the mean. If the standard deviation is very, very low, that means that the data is very, very close to the mean means that if it's a very small number, it would shrink our graph down to make it really peak very, very close to the mean. Whereas if the standard deviation was very, very high, that would mean that the graph would be much larger, that, that our, our data would be spread out even further. Um, so that's uh, what the standard deviation tries to tell us. We can calculate the standard deviation uh, using this formula. Essentially what it is saying is that we take each score, so if I've got my set of scores x1, uh, x2, x3, x4, etc, and, and have a look at all of those numbers, I need to take each of those individual scores, so x1 to start with, I subtract away the mean from that score, square that value, then add all of those together for each value for x, x2 and x3 and x4, x3 we do it for and x4, all the way up to all of the scores, all of the scores, all the way up to xn. So we would sum those um, deviations from the mean, squaring them, sum all of those together, divide by the number of scores that we actually have and then take the square root of the whole lot. I'll be showing you in class exactly how to use your calculators to be able to do it a bit easier, but you need to know how to use this formula. You need to remember this formula, so you need to make sure you practice it. As I said before here, it says a small standard deviation indicates the data is concentrated around the mean, whilst a large standard deviation means that it's much more spread out. Let's have a look at an example here of calculating the mean and standard deviation for this data set. So to calculate the mean, we know x bar is equal to sum of the x values divided by n. So if I add up all of those x values, I get 28. Divide by how many of those values there are, there are five. And so I get that the mean is 5.6. In order to work out the, so we've calculated the mean. In order to work out the standard deviation, so sigma here, we need to take the square root of all of the deviations from the mean squared, summed up, 
divided by how many numbers we have. We've got five numbers. So our first number is 2. So we do 2 subtract 5.6, that's our mean, squared, plus 4 subtract 5.6 squared, plus next one, 5 minus 5.6 squared, plus 8 minus 5.6 squared, plus 9 minus 5.6 squared. And we divide all of those by 5 and then square root the whole lot. So here we can see 2. Here's our 2 minus 5.6, our mean. So our mean is 5.6. We're taking each of our scores. 4, subtracting away 5.6. 5, subtracting away 5.6. 8, subtracting away 5.6. 9, subtracting away 5.6, squaring each of them as we go and adding those together, dividing by how many uh, scores we have. We've got five scores and then taking the square root of the lot of them. If we do that, we see that the standard deviation is 2.6. That means that if I look at the, at the data, if I was to try and draw a graph of the data, if we have a look at here, 5.6 is the mean. That's where we start. It means that the majority of the data is 2.6 above and 2.6 below our actual uh, mean. So that's, that's our, our standard deviation is 2.6. Looking at a second example now, uh, an example where we're looking at a back-to-back -back stem and leaf plot. We're looking at comparing these two values and we're being asked which city has the lowest standard deviation. And then ask, we're being asked to explain why. We can have a look at the spread of the data just by having a look at the shape of the data here. We don't have to calculate anything just yet. Now we can have a look at how far it spreads out. Now, Sydney has a larger spread. It is more spread out, more spread out. So we can even see that the range, the, at the minimum and maximum value for Darwin, the minimum value is two, and the largest value here is 35, 35. The smallest value for Sydney is one, but the largest value is 52. We can see that the spread is much larger for Darwin, uh, for Sydney than Darwin. So we might say uh, the standard deviation for Darwin, or for, yeah, for Darwin, is lower than the standard deviation for Sydney. As the data for Sydney is much more spread out. So because it is much more spread out, it must, must have a larger standard deviation. In order to actually um, give some evidence, you should also showing and even just doing a quick calculation using your calculator, not having to add up all of the different values because doing that would be very time consuming. What you can do is just using your calculator function that I'll explain in class, you can find the standard deviation sigma for Darwin will actually be 9.8 and the sigma value, the standard deviation for Sydney will be 14.7. Oops, 14.7. So we can see there that the standard deviation for Darwin is much smaller than the standard deviation for uh, Sydney. Just uh, to recap on our, um, on our learning goals, what we've looked at today is we've looked at being able to find and determine the standard deviation for a set of data. We've looked at being able to uh, calculate that standard deviation. We've looked at being able to compare the standard deviations for a set of data 
uh, for, for two sets of data um, to see um, how their spread um, actually changes, how the spread of the data actually changes.